All right, I'm interested, and I can't, uh, nothing can fucking dissuade me once I'm interested in something, I'm like a hyperbeam of focus. <clears throat> Abandonment, depression, fear and shame, inner critic, four Fs, 247. Fuck, the map, managing the abandonment depression. I mean, really, I best read all of this fucking chapter, but first I want to read this fear and shame in a critic 4Fs bit. <clears throat> Let us look at a case example of how triggering works in the reverse direction. My mega perfectionistic flight type client, Mario, came into our session five minutes late. This is the first time he'd been late in two years of therapy. Mario was in full-fledged flight, sweating from racing up the hill from his parking space a block away. He told me that he could just not sit on the couch today. Could he please just pace in front of the couch? I hate being late. I won't tell you. Please don't ask just how fast I was driving on the freeway. Mario compulsively paced. But this drivenness was nothing compared to the speed of his obsessing, as he rattled off many versions of the most of the inner critic attack programs listed in Chapter 9. Oh. To him, his being late was merely the tip of the iceberg of his defectiveness. As his rant against himself amped up, he increasingly scared himself with his own words and shamed himself with his parents' disgust. Finally, seemingly exhausted, Mario collapsed on the couch and launched into the first suicidal ideation I'd ever heard from him. He'd just landed in the pit of abandonment, of the abandonment melange, depression encrusted with fear and shame. <sighs> oh. And was sinking to the bottom in a despairing depression of helplessness and hopelessness. This was the real helplessness. Depression of helplessness and hopelessness. Oh, fuck. This was the real helplessness and hopelessness that he, that had so characterised his childhood. Fortunately, I've been diligently planting seeds about his need to grieve over the last two years. For the first time since early childhood, the tears came, and it was the most moving monsoon I'd witnessed in ages. He cried... For the little forsaken boy he had been, he came home via his pain, to being on his side. The long exile into self-abandonment was temporarily over for the first time he could remember. We were then able to look at the cycle of reactivity that had turned into a cyclone, triggered by a traffic jam into the terrible danger of being late. CPTSD launched him into his flight response as he raced to get to my office. The flight response also immediately triggered the out inner critic to attack him for his lateness and to catastrophize about the consequences. As it did, he fell deeper and deeper into shame and fear and then ultimately into the abandonment depression itself. This time, however, Mario broke the flashback with his tears, as his crying released his fear and shame. This in turn defueled his critic and allowed his body to begin releasing the hyper-arousal of his flight response. He had not been able to do this. He most likely 
Had he not been able to do this, he most likely would have continued attacking himself with shame-fueled shame -fueled perfectionism and fear-fueled drasticizing. He would then have launched out of the session back to obsessively and compulsively racing through his day, driven by his infinite to-do list. Well, shit, I feel cooled out. How are you?